welcome to Learn from the Experts, sponsored by WBOA. And today, I have Sally Morgan with me. Welcome, Sally. Hi, great to be here. Good. So Sally, tell me the name of your business. My business is Holistic Physical Therapy for Pets and People. And this is Tristan, he's a corgi. He's here to represent the pets that I work with. Oh, great. So tell me some of the physical therapy that you do. Well, um, first of all, I'd like to clarify what holistic physical therapy is because a lot of people don't understand that. Great. And holistic physical therapy is an approach to a being as a whole body. I don't just address uh, your broken elbow. I look at how that's affecting your back or your knees or your hips or your other arm. And that translates over to our pets and horses as well. Uh, I see many people after um, maybe like an ACL injury. And then I see many pets after ACL surgery. And that often will result in gait asymmetries, which makes uh, a big challenge for the back to keep balance for the person or the dog. And so it's really important to address the whole body. And that, I take it even a step further and address the whole body and the, um, the spiritual body and the mind as well as the physical body. And it's really important to address all levels of your being to ensure um, healing that goes deep and is permanent. And often I can see huge changes in the animals and people I work with in one or two sessions because of the strength of, of the modalities that I use. Great, that sounds so interesting. <laughs> I wouldn't even known something like that existed. So is there like specific things you do or like you said just is it very individual, like are there certain? Um, I do primarily craniosacral therapy in my practice for animals and people, and I am the person who developed craniosacral therapy for small animals in this country. And oh. so that's really where my expertise lies, and that's where I can really help people who have uh, senior dogs who are perhaps declining in their ability to get up and down stairs or uh, just in their mobility. Maybe they have arthritis and pain. And cranial sacral is um, a good a whole body technique to address all kinds of issues. There may be digestive problems. And then I have a couple of other modalities I use, Tellington T-Touch, which I primarily use when I have animals brought to me with behavior or training issues. Um, and that would be horses, dogs, cats, and rabbits. Rabbits too have behavioral issues. That's so interesting. But back to the cranial sacral, am I saying it right? Mm -hmm. I thought that would be like cranial, is that the head? But you're saying it's a whole body. Yeah, craniosacral therapy is working on the central nervous system. So that would include the brain, the bones of the skull and face, the spinal cord, the, the spinal um, bones, the ver vertebral processes, and all the way down the spine to the sacrum. And there is a rhythmic motion of your spinal fluid that moves from your head down towards your sacrum, down the spinal column and the spinal cord, and then back up to your head on a, a regular pattern. And so craniosacral therapists, and there are many types of craniosacral therapy, I'm trained in a few of them. And what craniosacral therapists do is use that information from that fluid moving in the spinal column to make corrections in the body. And because we're working directly with the nervous system, only a few modalities really work directly with the nervous system, craniosacral, Feldenkrais, and T-Touch. And because you can do that, you can access really deep healing and correct problems that may be even years old. Many animals are rescues and they may have been hit by a car before the person right. had them. And all they know is that whenever their son hit, touches the dog on the hind end, he's rascally. And that could be from a longstanding prior injury that craniosacral can work with and uh, bring about healing so that the dog is calmer and safer with the children. Oh, great. Now you mentioned another one, you said Tellington T-Touch. Now how is that different? Tellington T-Touch was developed by a woman named Linda Tellington Jones, and it's a way of working with companion animals, horses, and now humans to address any kind of behavior problem and physical problem, and really just imbalance in that animal's life or body. And we have uh, what we call a confidence course that we use with horses and dogs and cats and rabbits, where they walk over specific obstacles to um, do things to engage confidence and balance. Um, a dog that's out of balance physically is out of balance emotionally. And then we also have a whole lot of body work, which is based on a, a circular touch um, that we do with Tellington T-Touch work. And then we also have special equipment. 
they were some of the forerunners in using um, two points of attachment with leashes for dogs in order to help them stay in balance when they're reactive or pulling on the leash. Um, it's very difficult to work with a dog when they're um, really emotionally agitated and so to be able to put them in physical balance with some of our equipment can be really effective. Hmm, that sounds fascinating. Now, do you have like a story maybe of a dog or cat, rabbit, something that you've changed their life or? I have worked with so many animals and really helped them. I've had, I do something uh, related to chiropractic work where um, many animals will come to me kind of limping on three legs and after one treatment of what we call veterinary orthopedic manipulation, they're walking out just fine like a person would after a trip to a chiropractor. But I had one particular Doberman mix named Max who came to me many years ago and he really challenged me. He needed everything I knew how to do at that time to help him. He was so terrified of other dogs. He had come from an extreme abuse situation and when his person would try to walk him, if he saw another dog or even a squirrel, um, he would jump up on her shoulders for wow. safety, like a lamb. And she was a petite woman, he was knocking her over. And so he had tremendous emotional issues that the craniosacral work helped release from his system. And then we did lots of T-touch work on the confidence course and helping him understand how to be with other dogs. And my prior corgi comment was what we call a neutral dog, which means he's not reactive when another dog is barking or leaping or jumping at him. And so Comet would just lay on the ground and Max would freak out and bark and squirrel around his person and Comet didn't react. And so Max started to realize that he didn't have to do that in order to calm himself down. And I taught his person how to do the body work on him, which brought him back into emotional balance. And after maybe six weeks of weekly sessions, um, it was such a proud day for Max. We had a little graduation ceremony and some of my neighbors had been helping with their dogs and we went striding down the neighborhood with six dogs and Max in the middle and he was confident and courageous and his person was confident that he wasn't going to jump on her anymore. And he was just a real success story because he had been kicked out of several dog schools. Oh, sure. Many of my clients have been kicked out of dog school or been uh, called hopeless by traditional veterinary practices. Wow. Well, you know, now it is such a trend to get rescue dogs. Right. And when you get a rescue dog, you don't know of their past. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that could use these kind of services to have better behaved animals. Now, how did you get involved in this? I have had animals all my life. My mother grew up on a farm and I love animals and I've always had dogs and I was a high level dressage rider, nationally ranked for many, many years with my horses, which were ordinary horses. I had, um, because of my training in T-Touch, I've been working with Linda Tallington for over 35 years. And because of my work with her, my horses were able to excel at very high levels because part of what happens with the work I do is that you open a dialogue with the animal and you learn to really listen to them and really understand their signals. And I think this is so important in a time when people are familiar with dog whispering and horse whispering but really, animals aren't looking for us to whisper to them. We talk to them all the time. Right. They want us to listen to them. We need to hear what they're saying with their body posture, their breathing, the signals they give us with their eyes and their expressions. And nearly every person I know will tell me a story about their cat or their dog or their rabbit or their horse and say, he understands English. I ask him if he wants this and he always knows. And I ask him in German because I speak that and he does not know what I mean. So he understands English. And in fact, animals are really desperate for us to communicate with them. And so many people have that skill and they just need the confidence to engage their animal more fully. That's great. So you do work with the owners as well to teach them. Yes. So it's kind of a, a two way street. Yes, and I do quite a lot of work with horses and riders because of my expertise in that area. Um, a lot of riders will have um, something going on in their body. If they're driving far, um, you know, maybe an hour to work each day, their right leg will become kind of functionally shorter from the position with the gas pedal. And then they race to the farm to their horse and they get on and they're always sitting crooked. That leg is always short, oh, even on yeah. the horse. That twist goes into the saddle and then into the horse and then they complain that their horse can't turn to the left or the right it can be either side 
And so I am able to offer physical therapy for the person and the horse. And because of my equine background, I can look at what's wrong with the saddle. Because even if you have a riding lesson and someone's telling you to lengthen that leg, it won't stay with you if your saddle has gotten this deformity in it after 10 years of riding a little bit crooked. So it's right. really a wonderful experience to be able to work with the whole unit, back to that idea of holistic therapy, it's the whole system. And the same is true for dogs. I've had people have knee surgery and then be limping and suddenly their dog is limping on the same leg wow. from walking with them. Wow, yeah, you never think of all that. So that's great. We're, we're kind of running out of time, but I think, you know, you've really given so much great information. I think anybody with a dog or cat or rabbit horse, I think that's so awesome, the whole rabbit thing, but um, they can know that there is some hope. Oh, yeah. So I know that um, you have a, you had a best-selling book, Dances of the Heart. Yes. And um, so that's great. So I really want to thank you for coming today and sharing your information. And the name of your business again? Holistic Physical Therapy for Pets and People. Perfect. So thank you so much. That's it for today. And if you want to lo learn more about Sally Morgan, you can go on WBOA.org and look her up in our membership. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yes. And you